Hello, everybody. Welcome back to day five, right? Day five, November 30th of my holiday gift extravaganza. This is Jan of Jan X Creates, in case you didn't know by now. <laughs> we are having fun. Um, yeah, I, I can't believe five days have already gone by. I think that's probably about 30 gifts. Well, after today, 30 gifts given away already. I hope you're having fun, as much fun as I am. I know you are reading each other's comments and really enjoying the stories, and I am too. Um, you know, I'm just kind of winging this. I think I said that at the beginning. Every day before I start the video, I think, what am I going to ask today that people are going to be interested in? And so far, I seem to be doing okay. <laughs> we'll see as, as time goes on if I run out of questions or not. Anyway, first, a little bit of business. Um... Yesterday, the charts that I had chosen, that I had been given to give away, most of them were from Wendy, from of from the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. I wanted to let you know that she is having a sale in her Etsy shop, 25% off. The dates were actually from the 28th to the 30th, so today is the last day. Um, so 25% off, she does have some PDFs in her shop as well as hard copies. I will be linking that um, link below again today so that if you want to check out not just the patterns that I have here but um, you know what else she has in her shop I, I totally encourage you to do that um, so yesterday's question is about what other fun decor do you have in your home besides your cross stitch items or which what what is your favorite some of you kept with the Christmas theme, others went, you know, different directions. Um, it's all good. I think it stirred up some more memories for you. Some of you had an easy time answering the question and some of you had to think about it a little bit. So I thought that was kind of cool that I made you kind of look around and say, you know, what is my favorite thing? For many of you, many of you are quilters and for many of you, um, the quilts that you've made or the quilts that you've been given, maybe passed down through your family are your favorite things. Some of you um, mentioned that you like have quilts everywhere, like just, a, it just brought to mind a totally comfy and cozy feel, even like draped out on the front porch. I mean, it sounds lovely. Of course, family pictures are another big thing. Um, we all have our, I, right now my family pictures are still in a, in a pile in our bedroom because we haven't painted our bedroom yet. Yet That's going to happen this weekend. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, antiques from furnitures, from antique furniture to furniture handed down through the family to, you know, everything from bottles to teacups to teddy bears. Um, one of you mentioned that or remarked, I guess, that, you know, back in the day, collecting things was a thing, right? And you just don't see that happening as much in the younger generations. They're much more minim minimalist. Um, and I'm not sure why that is, but I thought that was interesting. I know certainly my older son, who is more established, is very much a minimal minimalist, although he is collecting some art for his walls. So in that, he kind of takes after us because we do collect art. Um, my younger son isn't established enough yet to collect anything other than bills that need to be paid. <laughs> and that's when we get phone calls. <laughs> Such is life. Um, I was actually, I don't, I try not to collect anything other than cross stitch patterns, right? I am not a big collector because um, I don't like a lot of clutter and a lot of things laying around, but I did have quite a huge collection of um, the Dickens Department 56 Village. And it's actually one that I got like as a huge set from a friend at work whose father was downsizing and was selling off his collection. So I kind of got it en masse from him. 
So I don't know whether it was really collected more than just purchased all at once, but I loved that. I had some pieces up all the time in my china cabinet in our home in Arnold or in Maryland. Um, and then there were other pieces that we only brought out at Christmas and set up displays at Christmas. And I loved my Dickens, my Dickens houses. When we downsized, when we moved to Florida and downsized and then kind of rolling after that into apartments, of course, there just wasn't room. And so I got rid of everything. I have one left and that is the, um, the wool, Oh, it's over in my in my knitting room. I'll have to show it to you in a video, but it's it's the the wool gatherer, the wool something to do with wool, um, wool shop. No, that's not right. Anyways, I kept one, and I I'm just kicking myself now because if I could have looked ahead, right, and and seen where we'd end up, I would have kept them in storage someplace. What can you do? Not much now. Um. Let's see, like I said, mostly, I mean, we do love to collect art. So we have several original art pieces on the wall, as well as some by my son. Um, I bought two more from him. So that is coming in the mail, hopefully in the not too distant future. Um, but I, I would say most of what you guys love, your, your favorite items have connections in some way, whether it's from loved ones, family members who passed it down to you or um you know that it was handmade by somebody there there's that kind of connection and of course the family portraits there's all those kind of connections that make something loved um let's see i was also interested to see how many of you have family members who excuse me who painted things Many of you have artwork either from like grandparents who painted, sisters or other family members who painted, or even children like my son, children who've painted, or of course, you know, the wonderful artwork that we get from our children when they're in school and they're doing projects. So all those things are hanging on our walls and that is awesome. All right, so time to, I have the burpees this morning, excuse me. Time to give away what we did yesterday. So first up, we have the two charts. This is number one, the two charts from the her from Wendy's monthly Quaker series. So she has just started this, right? So we only have January and February out now, and she is currently working on the model for March. So like I said, if you're interested in getting into some kind of auto ship for these, look around to find out where, where you can find that. So this goes to Lori Brock. She says, my favorite decor item right now won't fit on your wall shelving, but I love switching it up by season. It is a three level tiered tray. I've been buying, <coughs> excuse me, I've been buying and making small items for each season. It sits on my kitchen island, so I see it often. I actually do have a three tier tray and it sits on my little, um, my little table thing in my foyer there's a proper word for that <laughs> but it's not coming into my brain anyways yes i do have one of those that i decorate each season with the smalls and stuff i actually just put it back together they had taken it apart whenever the movers packed us out and i actually just put it back together and decorated it for christmas the other day yay go me <laughs> number two berry blossom sampler this is going to carrie graziano my favorite items to decorate my home with are photos of my family, especially my children. I love to see their growth and accomplishments. Amen to that. So the photos that I have waiting to be hung in the bedroom are everything, I mean, parents' photos for the both of us, Mike and I, but then the boys' photos everywhere from their first baby pictures on up to their high school graduation pictures. So yeah, love that. Number three is the black sheep sampler. This is going to Laura. Laura says, I truly treasure the artwork that both boys have done in their earlier years at school. I plan on hanging most of them in the living room to be seen every day. That's awesome, Laura. I don't know that I kept, well, I, I did keep their artwork for a while. Ben's especially, cause he, I mean, from a young age, he was, he was very good. Um, I don't know what happened to that, <laughs> you know, 
Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Number four is the stitch cards from Be In My Bonnet, Lori Holt. This is going to the Gem Stitchery. If the picture frames I want ever come back in stock, she has her eye on something, then I'd have to say my most favorite decor item would be black and white photos from my daughter's birth. Very tasteful because they'll be off to one side of the kitchen, but just very special tender moments between my husband and I and our baby girl. That is a really cool idea. You know, just some simple black and white pictures, but to, to keep that, that memory going. I love that. All right, first baby stocking. This is number five. This is going to Patricia Clark. Patricia says, my favorite wall decor is a pic of my sister, her husband, and my husband who have all passed away. It's a picture of our cruise to the Bahamas. My niece framed it and gave it to me for my birthday many years ago. That is very sweet. And that's the kind of thing that I was talking about, all the, the memories that are associated with the photos. In fact, one of you had a fantastic idea and it's like one of those light bulb moments that it's like, why didn't I think of that? You had said that you create shadow boxes from um, little things that you buy on trips that you and your husband do. And, um, you know, all throughout the, the trip, you may be looking for small items to include in the shadow box. And you have a shadow box for every trip. And I think that is brilliant. And again, why didn't I think of that? And I'll tell you why. Why, you ask? I'll tell you why. Um, I crack myself up. Um, so you know that we are striving to hit as many national parks as possible, that we have the national park um, book that we get the stamps in. And when we go to get the stamps, we also buy the pins. And I have been kind of, I would say haphazardly buying the patches for each of the national parks. And I say haphazardly because I've gotten some of them and then there will be times that, you know, we'll be at the next park and it's like, well, what am I going to do with these? And I won't buy it. And then the next park, well, I like that one. I want it. I buy it. But I don't know what to do with them. That is a great idea. So I can buy, get a shadow box and put the national park patch in and maybe the pin, if I don't make it into a needle minder, um, and you know, different things. I think that is brilliant. So thank you for that tip. I don't remember who said that, but I, I commented on your comment that it was a fantastic idea and I do appreciate that. Okay, number six, last but not least, hello little one card. This one is going to Mona Ortego. She says, my favorite decor item is my needle turn applique quilts. Now I will admit, that I haven't the faintest idea what that is. I know what an applique quilt is, but I don't know what a special needle turned one is. It sounds lovely though. Thank you guys for participating and for sharing with me. I do love hearing about these things. And there's so many of you who I would love to visit and see these things that you're talking about. They sound lovely. And yes, Rose, you are one of them. <laughs> Someday I'll be heading up to your neck of the woods. Oh, look, a kitty just came in. Do you want to come and say hi? Did you have a little nibble? Come on, baby. Come on, don't just sit there and squeak. Come on. I'm in her chair, of course, so she wants me to get up. All right, so moving on to today. Day five. Well, come on. You can come up here. There she is. There's a pretty girl. Say hi, Nina. She's a pretty girl. She's a sweetie pie. All right. Fur is going to be flying now. What's the matter, baby? I want to sit on your lap. Oops, I just tilted you. Okay, so Today we have another six. All of these are just charts, so all of these are open to international as well as US. And the first one, very appropriate, is Cat Lovers by Jardin Prouvé. Come on, baby kitty. All right, so that is number one. Number two, we have Blue Velvet by Ink Circles. 
Number three, we have All Dolled Up by Little House Needleworks. <laughs> she is so talkative now. She didn't used to be this way. Number four is, I think this one is called, yeah, We the People by Erica Michaels. That one's cool. Number five, again, another little house, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And number six, another little house, Needleworks, Town Church. So, today's question is, let's go outside. We talked about your favorite decor inside. One of the other areas that um, we can't wait to get started on for making it our own is our backyard. We have lots of ideas. Nothing's going to happen till the spring. What I want to hear from you is what is the favorite part of your backyard, if you have one, and why? If you don't have a backyard, if you're in an apartment, is there a favorite apart a favorite part of your apartment complex that you like? I know the apartment complex that we were in in Maryland had many different like little cozy nooks and sitting areas and um, recreation areas and walking paths. It was just a really nice complex. So does your co apartment complex have something nice like that that you enjoy? Again, outside. If you, if not, is there a special place in the home that you grew up in or one of the homes if you moved a lot or if you live in an RV, can you tell that I've lived in all these different places so I can relate? If you live in an RV, do you have a favorite RV park? I'm going to tell you about a couple of my favorite RV parks. One is in the town, I believe, of, I'm going to say this wrong now, Chocoloxy, I believe it is. It's on the western edge of the Florida Everglades, and it is a very nice RV park that is basically on a peninsula, so surrounded by water. Um, we had a beautiful couple of days there on one of our trips. On the same trip, we were in an RV park, actually a KOA, not far outside of Fort Lauderdale, called the Lion Safari KOA because it was right outside of a um, a park, a, a, a thing, <laughs> I don't know what to call it, called the Lion Safari. And this is one of those drive-through safari places. This KOA was right on the outside and it was amazing. Again, we just stayed, stayed there like two nights. So the morning of the day that we were taking the tour through the safari park, Mike was outside cooking breakfast on the grill. And, um, you know, I was outside helping him and just kind of hanging out. You could hear the lions roaring as they were feeding them. They were getting their morning, their morning, their breakfast, right? And you could hear the lions roaring and it was amazing. The other amazing one that kind of stands out in my mind is the RV park that is located on Lake Powell in Page, Arizona. Gorgeous, gorgeous setting. Love that place. We were there for a number of days and just beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Oh, just gorgeous. All right, so that is it for today. One, two, three, four, five, six again. I'm looking forward to hearing about your favorite outdoor space, wherever it might be. Um, and I think that's all for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.